If after using the jump, it becomes apparent that the listener hasn't understood you and you need to repeat the phrase again, rather than using the jump again, it's better to switch over to orchestral speech. In this slideshow, I discuss how the jump can be combined with orchestral speech and with other fluency shaping techniques at times when listeners fail to understand you. In everyday life, when speaking, it's, it's not really practical to have to continually pay attention to how your words are coming out. Normally, speakers focus their energy on what they want to say and simply have faith that it'll come out appropriately. So similarly, when you speak, in most situations of everyday life, you can do the same. Just focus on what you want to say and don't worry about how it'll come out. There's no need to use any fluency enhancing technique at all unless you really have to. Only when you actually find yourself getting stuck is it then appropriate to use the jump to get going again. Most of the time, if you use the jump in this way, it'll work fine in as much as it'll get you going again and the listener will understand you. And as long as the listener has understood you, just carry on, even if what you say didn't come out quite as well or as smoothly as you had hoped. When you get to the end of a phrase, if it becomes apparent that the listener hasn't understood you, irrespective of whether or not you stammered, you will need to repeat some of that phrase. So go back to a suitable point. If possible, go far enough back to enable you to establish a bit of a rhythm in advance of any potential problem words. Decide on the exact speed and rhythm that you want to use to say the phrase and then repeat that phrase using orchestral speech. As far as possible, when repeating, use exactly the same words that you did the first time round, because you've already formulated and practiced these words once. So this saves you from having to engage in any additional ref reformulating. And say the phrase with exactly the rhythm and speed that you planned, just as you would if it was the line of a song. Remember, for orchestral speech to work, you need to give the highest priority to maintaining the intended speed and rhythm, the forward flow, even if some of the sounds come out wrong. And keep going to the end of the phrase, even if some of the words come out differently to how you intended. It's useful to spend some time practicing integrating the jump with orchestral speech. So here's an exercise you can try out. Find someone to act as a conversation partner and explain to them that you're going to read something out of a book and also engage them in conversation about it. Tell them to occasionally interrupt you with something like, sorry, I missed that, could you repeat it? These interruptions can be in response to real misunderstandings or pretend ones, it doesn't matter. But whatever the case, it's important that their interruptions should not be prompted by your stammering, unless your stammering genuinely caused them to misunderstand you. Start off by reading from a book without using any technique at all. Then, if you block or get stuck, use the jump to get started again. And if your conversation partner asks you to repeat something, do so using orchestral speech. When using orchestral speech to repeat a phrase, make sure that you stick to exactly the same words that you said the first time round and make sure that you give the highest priority to speaking with an appropriate speech rate. Be as strict with your timing as you would be as if you were singing or playing if you were singing or playing in an orchestra. Sometimes, when students first start this exercise, they find that they struggle to repeat the phrases they're asked to repeat using orchestral speech. And because of this, the words don't come out at the intended speech rate. If you find this happening, 
then you need to add a couple more stages to the procedure. Start by silently mouthing the phrase at the intended speech rate, then whisper it at the intended speech rate, and then finally say it with voicing at the intended speech rate. Once you start to feel confident that you can manage this exercise without these extra stages, try to use orchestral speech with your full voice straight away. The stricter you are with yourself with regard to maintaining your planned speech rate, the easier you'll find it to do. Out of all of the available fluency shaping methods, orchestral speech is the most natural sounding. So when the jump doesn't work, and indeed whenever somebody has difficulty understanding something that you've said, in real life situations, we would normally advocate repeating the phrase using orchestral speech. However, if you find yourself struggling to do so in real life situations, you can employ other fluency shaping approaches instead, such as syllable timed speech and prolonged speech. These more basic techniques may be easier to employ. In real life speaking situations, if the listener fails to understand the very first word of a phrase that you speak, and if you're not at all confident of being able to repeat that first word using orchestral speech, it may help to insert a few filler words prior to it. Doing so will help you to establish a rhythm which would then enable you to get the word out. So, for example, if someone asks me my name, normally I just answer Paul. If the listener fails to get my name, and if I doubt that I'll be able to say it clearly enough at the second attempt, then I could add some words before it and say, for example, my name is Paul, using orchestral speech. Because those filler words are not important in themselves, it, it doesn't really matter if I don't say them clearly, so they tend to come out quite easily. Adding those extra words nevertheless enables me to establish a rhythm and forward flow. An alternative way of getting a problematic single word out is to take a short, sharp in-breath just before saying it. This in-breath can act as a timing cue in a similar but less obtrusive way to adding filler words. This is essentially the method that is used by the, by the Maguire program. So, for example, with my name, I would say, Paul, Paul. Although these two crutches can help you to get started again, try not to use them any more than you absolutely have to.